America has a big black problem. Half of America, we don't want to vote for Kamala Harris. The other half, they don't want to vote for Donald Trump. And our politicians, they lack imagination. They lack creativity. And so most of Americans right now, we're trying to figure out what we're going to do. How do we save America? Small towns are dying. So many black Americans right now, we're still living in poverty. We don't own anything. In big cities from Chicago to Houston to L.A. to New York, blacks are stacked on top of blacks, and we're bringing in all these millions of immigrants. Now, what's happening with these millions of immigrants? They're going to rural America because they're trying to revitalize small-town America. Now, why not do that for black Americans? That's the question that I have for all of America. My biggest question, I, had, I started to examine this. I have questions. I want to know. How can we really make America the most greatest, most powerful nation going forward? How can the people do it? How can American men contribute to the success of America? So I looked at the history of America. You always got to start right in the beginning. And so now could you imagine if the America's greatest sin, which is slavery, what would have happened if freed slaves were given the property on which they existed? What if the American slaves owned the plantations in which they were slaves? How would America look different? How would, how would black America look different? Would we have more money? Would, would rural America be prospering right now? And so if that's a great question, what happened to those black Americans who did get free? They had the great migration. They went to big cities because they're, they're in search of jobs. And now that all these black people are in these cities and their poverty and the crime is so crazy, we got to address that. And so now what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? We got to have programs. We need reparations for black Americans, but how do, what do reparations look like, especially right now in modern times? I want to have incentive-based programs for black families that live in urban areas that say, hey, if you move to small-town America, we're, gonna, we're not only going to set you up with a nice piece of property, but we're also going to set you up with a vehicle, and we're going to bring industries to bring small-town America back to life. We're going to get some of the crime out of the big cities, and we're going to end some of the poverty in small-town America just by relocating lots of black people. Lots of black people? Man, that sounds crazy. Do these black folks have a say in if they move or not? Of course they do. The program says, hey, you're living in poverty in a really big city. You're probably on some type of government assistance. And so to transition you away from this government program, what we're going to do is we're going to take you from being a cow on this land because that's all uh, when you have Section 8 housing, when you have SNAP food benefits. You're taking a human person and you're turning them into a commodity. You're turning millions of black folks, millions of poor people into a commodity. What kind of commodity? Livestock. They can live on the land. They can eat on the land, but they never own the land. And for the most part, they're contained to this very small area. And now I want to set the, I want the black person to actually be free in America for the very first time. I want black folks to be owners in America. We have, in California, they, they tried to pass a bill that said immigrants could come to, to California and buy a house. Now, why would America do such an egregious thing right in the face of, of beautiful black folk? Why would they do that? Because we allow them to do that. Because we don't have any alternative. We don't have a plan on how we can save ourselves. And so as a black American, as a descendant of slaves, as a, I love America. I'm a veteran of America. And I want to see this place be the most bestest place in the history of the world. Donald Trump says, make America great again. And you get mad at that. Why do you get mad at that? Don't you want America to be a place where everyone has a chance to succeed? Now, I know that black folks, they were running away from slavery and oppression. Now, when black folks return to the place in which they were slaves, whether it's in the South or whether it's in the Midwest, all of a sudden they have an opportunity. America has an opportunity to make right its greatest sin. America has an opportunity right now to save its economy with just a little bit of creativity. Hey, I think that the United States, all 50 states, should be able to communicate with each other something like a, a, a professional sports organization, like the NBA. The NBA has 30-plus teams, and all teams, if they need to trade, they do trade, and there's sometimes financial incentives, right? What if the states acted that way? For example, what if Kansas was able to talk directly to Texas and say, um, Kansas needs 3,000 plumbers. Hey, Texas, do you have 3,000 plumbers? Or if, say, Iowa contacted Texas and said, Texas, we need, I don't know, 75,000 general laborers because we're building a new factory. 
And now with this conversation, it creates the opportunity so that we can have a great migration. How do, how do we do this, right? And so if there are small towns that have good bones, stay with me. Don't leave. We're having a political dialogue on how we can solve America's big black problem. Dying small uh, towns and poor black folks. We're going to make this a marriage, okay? And so when I say small towns with good bones, I mean you have to have some type of uh, infrastructure. You need power, you need water supplies, and you also need some homes that are in a uh, shape that could be repaired, right? And you also need like a, a downtown, a town central. You need stores. Now, if you find small towns that have good bones, you bring in 10,000 blacks, and all of a sudden, you know, in the cities, uh, New York, Crime decreases by 30%, not just because black folks have left the city, but because you've gotten the poverty away from your city. And now the small town, we have to invest. You have to create opportunity. Lots of small towns die because there are no industries in these small towns. If you bring in 10,000 black folk, all of a sudden, they have to figure something out. They have to, how do we save ourselves? How do we build? How do we become owners in this wonderful town, which is now ours? Dear white person, how do you feel about this plan? This plan too complex? Do you, do you think that America should invest in the American black person? If you don't, why are you so angry about descendants of slaves actually wanting to participate in this wonderful economy which we know as America? Now, most white folks in general, they say, I'm against welfare, I'm against welfare. Were you against welfare during the Homestead Act of 1862 when, I don't know, millions of Americans got homes? Your ancestors got homes. Your great-great-grandfather, he got a house and he had acres of land. And those acres of land are now worth millions of dollars and this is your inheritance. Now, if that participated to you, I think that we need to have a brand new Black Homestead Act where black folks get incentivized to move out of these large cities and repopulate middle America, small town America, and watch how fast America starts growing. Now, dear black person, you say, I don't want to go to no country. I love living in the city. You want all the amenities of a city, right? Or how about the opportunity to have a fresh start? You say the white man did this and the white man did that. That's the white man calling me right now. What do you want, white man? Don't you leave no message. I'm having a conversation with the American people because you want to save this place. This election is not going to save America. No election is going to save America because no politician has the, the courage or the willpower or the financial backing to invest in the American people unless the American people, unless we come and we say this is what we want. We want a brand new Black Homestead Act, and some of you people, especially you liberals in urban communities or in, in big cities, if you really want to save the black person, then it has to be a comprehensive plan. A big business has to talk to big government, and big government has to take their orders from the people, and through a collaborative effort, we can change this whole system. We can make America the most powerful that it's ever been in history by simply having conversations on how we move wonderful folks from overcrowded areas to less densely populated areas and you watch the creativity of the American black and the American citizens change their poverty and their impoverished situation, lift America to economic heights that we've never seen because this is how we're going to solve America's big black problem through black ingenuity, through black thinkers, through black men who say, listen, I have to have the opportunity to go build. It's time to be the greatest American alive. Yes, you. Let's save this place. Save yourself.